Business calls me trouble down the waterfront. You know I tried to, now I'm running out of lies. It's a clear view when all your eyes get paid. This is like one of those. No more faith. This is like one. I know what we can do about it. I think I better run.
hell yeah, boys. Who are you? Who's watching this shit? Ugh, not been on this shit in a while, so... Literally had to set all this bullshit up. Throw it together very quickly. And do my shit, so... Yeah, right now I'm still trying to find a nice chill way, boys, so... I need some nice ambient music before I hop in. So uh, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different than normal. Um, there's a guy called Gilbert, and uh, I'm kind of got involved in this zeitgeist movement stuff again um, in a very minor capacity. I, I would, uh, I, oh, you, you guys, my audience may be very bored with this. This might be a very bored topic, but this is kind of like inadvertently what I was involved in, and I've also been like really what was taking the majority of my time was uh, a project I was working on and I will probably be occupying. So this is one of those rare moments where I hop on randomly and I have some time to kill uh, and show you guys some shit that I've, you know, been doing outside of uh, streaming. So long story short, I've been kind of acting like a mediator for another group called the Zeitgeist Movement. I, I suppose... That's the way to put it. And um, um, I'm going to, you know, be talking to a guy called uh, Gilbert. And he's uh, he's just some dude I met. And he seems okay. I've had past history with the guy. And, and uh, to be honest, it's not been so hot. I, I would say it wasn't a pleasurable experience. But it, it was an experience. And, uh, you know, it's, we're just going to have kind of a chill stream. So let me find a chill way for you guys. Just ambient music for the background before I pop Gilbert on stream here. I want to get something at least an hour long so I don't have to continue to... Uh... Can you convince my dad to ditch his expensive wireless oh, plan? Right now, got to advertise on Boys for Boost Mobile. A month. How about this brand new phone? Free! But I've always liked free. Switch to Boost and get four lines, each with unlimited gigs for $100 a month. Plus, get four free LG Stylo 4 phones. Hey, um... Kratina, thanks for telling me, man. If you have any problems with voice and shit, just tell me about that. But I gotta, I gotta do a preamble. We're, we're not talking about public IRL streamers, so this is. If I do introduce public IRL streamers, that's just gonna be like a thing. So I, I just want to give you guys a heads up, basically. So I'm gonna bring Gilbert on, and uh, you know, if another person comes on, there, there's Woodpecker. If you guys wanna like hop into the Discord too, you know, more than happy. I, I'm not using the POV prank Discord though, or or the Cream Team Discord. I'm on the Zeitgeist Movement Discord, so. I'll try to post a link up. I'm literally trying to throw this shit together. So, one moment. Fuck. Seems like I'm yelling at you guys. I don't mean to yell. Yo, um, Cretan, how, how's my voice going, man? Can you hear me? Yo, Gilbert, can you hear me, dude? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me uh, accurately as well? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're live right now. All you guys are live right now, currently. So, um, also, are you in the? Uh, can you see the chat room? Uh, yes, I can see. The okay, chat great, room. great. We got one customer so far, so that's pretty good for me. So, uh, yeah, what's and... what's going on, man? Uh, could you provide context to the question just so I know? Uh, oh, no, I just mean how, how are you today? What's going on? Um... Yeah, today's been very good. Um, I have um, today, if we're talking about the Zeitgeist movement, uh, proposed some ideas to move us forward. Uh, so I guess in that regard, uh, it has been eventful. But for the rest, I'm good. Oh, hell yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I just been kind of hanging out on this Discord, um, the Zeitgeist Movement Discord, basically. I, I Someone invited me in here, and uh, I know, Gilbert, that you know all this stuff already, but but towards my audience, so uh, they know what, where I'm coming from. Uh, you know, i just been kind of hanging out on this Discord, chatting with Woodpecker and uh, Gilbert and... Uh, 
um, all this other stuff. I've kind of had past history with the Zeitgeist movement, so um, it's not it's not been pleasant. But you know, I, I think things are are turning around from what I see right now, and uh, I just kind of wanted to get you guys, my audience, to kind of you know show you around of what you know I'm, I'm currently doing. I, I've also been working on a on a project as well. Um, um, that has been occupying most of my time and it's actually pertaining this particular projects pertaining to public IRL streamers um, and uh, like enhancing the tool sets that that they have but I don't really want to get into that right now but um, um, Gilbert uh, um, how, so so how long have you like you you recently came back to the zeitgeist movement yeah I, I don't think I've really been away from it but I had to take my time as well as everybody else that you know has a life. Uh, I I can explain a little bit more about my involvement in the Zeitgeist movement. I guess if that's uh, wanted. Absolutely, go ahead. Should we start there? Yeah. Okay. So I came in when I was uh, 20, 20 something, uh, at the beginning of the movement. Um, I've at that point um, just taking a look around you know and uh, I did try to get in touch with my local chapter which was not really a good experience in my uh, opinion uh, at, and, and, and that made me uh, wanting to involve myself more with the global level of the, of the movement because because i didn't see uh, a good uh, continuation of my involvement on the national level if you will so i did get involved with the global chapter uh, as as much as you can describe it to be something uh, i got involved there i talked to a lot of people and i said you know uh, the the least thing that we can do is unify people so that's what i did i unified people and i made a product that's called the international meeting now uh, a tradition that's still being done by people that are still involved in the movement so i guess mm -hmm. it was not such a bad thing to uh, to invoke uh, I can also say, and I understand, you know, uh, we've talked in private as well. Uh, there's been a lot of questionable things going around uh, in the movement. Not everybody's happy with all decisions that have been made. And that's, that's quite normal. I understand that. For me, it's not normal either. Uh, I mean, it, it's a lot of responsibility making decisions uh, on such a level. Uh, but I'm happy that we made it. Um, at least made it till here so I guess you know and it you're free to ask me anything uh, yeah that you would like so so um, what can you explain to my my people my audience who has no clue what the zeitgeist movement is what is the, the zeitgeist movement to you yeah that's a fair question <laughs> the zeitgeist <laughs> yeah. the zeitgeist movement represents a train of thought and that train of thought is quite clear and what we do as the zeitgeist movement is express that train of thought and help people educate um, other people on what that train of thought is and i i guess that might not sound that concise to other people that don't know zeitgeist movement uh, we're really just an information institute and uh, i guess that's where a lot of uh, confusion happens as well because people expect us to be also active in the political spectrum which is not what we aspire to be at this point in time uh, which could, could happen in the future but uh, at the moment it's just making sure that people understand what is possible uh, compared to what you know um, other uh, parties want to evoke i guess to make it simple but please do ask questions to uh okay you know, 
make it more concrete when, for people. When um, people watch Zeitgeist 1 and Zeitgeist 2, because I, I am familiar with the Zeitgeist movement, um, they perceive it as, you know, um, not having, like, you know, it's a utopia, it's, uh, it, it's, it's the Venus projects um, where, you know, robots are doing the future and, and all this other stuff. Would, would you agree with that notion, or is that... Um, or is, or is that a mistaken thing? The, the, is this a is this a potentially where people can develop um, communes or or how how do people interact with this mo movement? Does this movement benefit people in any way, or is, or is that the wrong train of thought uh, within the Zeitgeist movement? Does that make sense? Well, I, hope, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> the question makes sense. Okay. Of course. Um, Great. So um, I need the moment to process it as no well. No problem. Um, yeah, I mean, to say that, you know, um, having communes and, you know, establishing communities, if that's a bad thing, I wouldn't say that it is per se. I'm just saying uh, we need to stay true to the train of thought that establishes this movement, which is educating people on the possibilities of a new tomorrow. Uh, which is what I think that the core of TCDM properly understands. And I guess that's why we've survived so long. Um, but I do get the notion, I do get the suggestion of people when they say, okay, well, but we need something more tangible. Okay. And that's not an unfair point and not an unfair suggestion on their part either. So um, where do we go from there? I guess at the moment it's it's more important to get more people involved in the initial train of thought to make sure that we at least explain uh, what the possibilities are when the system cracks down. Uh, and that really um, is important to me and to a lot of uh, movement followers. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we don't hear uh, and don't see the notion uh, that people that want to get involved want something more tangible. I understand that. It's just understanding the movement is a very big thing. And uh, I don't think it's being understood in a way that it does need to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, okay. Because the, there's all this um, miscommunication and misinformation i suppose of what zeitgeist movement is as opposed to what what it isn't basically and and to me that that was the most confusing part was all that stuff um uh woodpecker uh, i don't mean to i can't dm you right now but um apparently someone said they entered the discord and they were they're already like they're already muted basically is is that true or uh, if they rejoin, I'll uh, see if I can change it. Okay. Yeah, but I, I mean, I think it's a good question. Uh, and, you know, um, as I've mentioned before in uh, uh, things that your audience wouldn't know, because we've talked about it in private, uh, the Zeitgeist movement has been a very chaotic experience for a lot of people. Uh, there were a lot of people with different expectations that came into here and it was very difficult to manage. And uh, yeah, as you've said yourself before, uh, yeah, you would have liked to see different things go in a different way. I think that I can ascribe to that myself. I would have liked to see that but you know we are here where we are now and i think we have a good premise to start things over again in in, in a good way so you know i'm so, ready yeah okay, okay so some of the harder questions oh hey wait junk andy says uh i know why it did that because uh, the invite leak was for a voice chat yeah yeah um junk andy uh if you want a voice chat you can come in here and hop in and voice chat um, if, if that's okay with you, Gilbert, I, I kind of have random people pop absolutely, in. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. It's, it's a little bit different than a typical thing. I normally let anyone hop in, and that's when shit usually occurs where, you know, uh, you know, we have good discussions, and then we have some real shitheads that have to go ban, okay? And uh, I'm, not, I'm not against banning, but, uh, um, you know, and then we get some interesting people too. So, 
Um, yeah, I'm, not, I'm, 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 not, I'm not really afraid of it. I mean, uh, okay. I, I, I think that if you, uh, if, if you uh, perform a pu public role for this movement, then you need to be ready to answer any kind of question. And I mean, uh, yeah, I welcome everybody to answer, sorry, to ask questions that they want. Yeah, and, and just to reiterate, junk, Junkie uh, Andy, we are not a, um, we're not talking about public IRL streamers currently right now. It's a different genre entirely. This is kind of what I was originally doing with my YouTube channel before I went into um, um, into public IRL stream streaming. You know, commentary I suppose is, is a way to put it. So, um, and anyways, Gilbert, I'm, I'm gonna have to reiterate that a bunch of times for people who come into the channel, um, but. Uh, Gilbert, yeah. um, what do you think? Like, what do you think were some of the mistakes with with the movement? Because the movement's been around since what 2008, 2000, 2009 at least. Um, it's it's been around for just about a decade, if, if not a decade. What would you think were were some of the positive things w within TZM, and then some of the negative things w within TZM? And and I may press you on, on more on on the negative aspects, but. Uh, um, I, I wouldn't expect anything less all right, at all, all to right. make make life really sour for me. <laughs> Ask me the and, hardest and so, question. To do. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm thinking um, when you when you answer these that you know if Zuko ever gets his hands on this to to try to see where you're coming from because I, I want to give you a fair shake just like everybody I do. Um, I you know that that you know you know if you're not able to chat with him, which, which I think he should chat with you to be honest. I think he should be able to chat chat with you in some capacity, and we can get into that a little bit later. But I want to I want him to at least you know if he listens to this, you can send him this as well to at least hear what you have to say. But I I want I want you to go through what were the good aspects and go through the the bad aspects of the Zeitgeist movement in in the past, and and think about you know like you're talking to Zuko or some somebody else, not necessarily me per se as well. Okay, I'll, I'll do my best. Um, uh, I'm going to uh, treat this uh, as you requested out of me. Um, the good aspects were working together with the people that I got to work with. Uh, I mean, a lot of people that are still active right now were people that I... Uh, and, and I don't mean this in an, any arrogant way or something. But there are people that I handpicked to uh, to help with the global efforts, and I'm so happy that they're still around. They're still doing the things that you know uh, aren't necessarily their job or something. You know, they're still doing it. They're still performing tasks, answering emails, answering the Facebook, uh, responding on social media. Uh, something that nobody could ask from them because it's you know it's it's a voluntary job um things that went bad uh, i guess that's a more interesting topic to talk about um a, a lot went wrong and i guess that's uh, partially ascribed to the chaotic situation that we were in so i guess one of the most uh, w when you mentioned zuko i mean one of the most important things i guess that we should highlight in the history of the movement is the RBO's SE uh, issues that we have. Um, I guess that was one of the most difficult episodes in, in the movement because uh, I guess the people that were around also knew that there were a lot of well-intentioned people uh, being involved with that. Uh, but then you get documents, straight documents that say, okay, well, the intention is just to override the movement, which is not the whole representation of the RBOC movement. Um, but you have to pull um, or you have to organize something and you have to make a decision. Um, and then you have to consider the movement as a whole. And I guess, yes, it's easy to say, okay, well, then maybe you should have done a bit more digging into the RBOC movement. RBOC's move movement or um, done F anything else but we're all volunteers here you know uh, uh, we have to make a decision just as uh, administration on the discord has to make a decision based on things being said 
uh, it's not so easy to make such a decision so uh, with the information that we had at that time uh, and asking about things that didn't go as well as I think they they could have been I would ascribe this situation as a situation that could have been handled better also from my perspective but I still think that in the end we made the right decision for the situation that was uh, happening at that time yeah and in uh, I, I can kind of speak on behalf of like like i was involved with rboc so okay so just for my audience um what little audience the four people that are viewing three three of which are here um <laughs> i i would say in a potential audience maybe but um yeah they like RBOC was uh, was a split off group from the Zeitgeist movement, and they they were Zeitgeist movement members for the most part, I, I believe, um, e- except for me. But um, they were people that were developers, and it was composite of developers who split off and wanted to form their own group called RBOC. And um, there was a lot of controversy when they actually split off, basically. And I was involved in that. And I would say that maybe um, I had proposed the idea to do the split because I, I had worked with open source projects before. And I had, um, whenever there was a disagreement, you would you would see projects fork it, basically, as, as they would say. So I told kind of Callie this, and then I explained it to, to Lucas. Lucas were people within the um, RBOC. RBOC, by the way, and this is a lot of shit. I'm sorry for my audience for not understanding this. Um, is research-based open source environment, something like that. I think they changed the acronym at some point, um, but that's what I remember it as. And um, they had different ideological differences between the Zeitgeist movement is how I would say. I wouldn't say that I would. I agreed everything with the Zeitgeist movement, but still I said I, I wouldn't agree with anything with uh, RBOSC. Um, I did not agree with a lot of the and uh, you know from myself speaking um agree with a lot of what was happening with with like the zeitgeist movement and uh it, it seemed like um a lot of my issues were with with this guy called tank top no hunter basically um having a lot of control um over the access of of the uh um of the database of of the zeitgeist movement where, where people were not e- could easily ex- ex- you know enter um um information and, and have access to that particular database um and it was just constant it wasn't just me it was constant contention with um everyone within the development team and uh um there was also stuff where um it was our interpretation during that time um th- there's a guy called peter joseph and um, Gilbert, I, I would say, and call me out on this, I, I would say that uh, um, Peter, like, like, not everyone had access to Peter Joseph, but Peter Joseph um, would call the shots um, some of the time, not all the time. You, you were the person that was kind of the, the buffer between um, um, the TZM Collective and, and Peter Joseph. Would you agree with that? Hmm. I, I mean, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Um, l- let me just collect my thoughts and, and, and make this as clear as possible. All right. Uh, yes. I mean, yeah. Uh, Peter is, is, is a person just as anybody as uh, as you and I am. Um, and I don't think that it's his preference to engage with people that much. Um I can tell you that the way that I came into the movement was with a conflict with Peter because I didn't agree with the way that it, everything was conducted but we found a middle ground we we uh, agreed on things that needed to be changed um, yeah you, you mentioned Noel Hunter yes uh, N- Noel is in no way you know um, a part of the movement he's he's a he's an employee in, in that sense uh that's also the only employee that we've ever had uh, aside from um uh, distributed tasks like specific project things that 
have been paid for so but Noel has been and that's not a mystery uh, Noel has been one of the the guys that have been part of the the paid structure if you will yeah, he will j- just to know he's also and this is kind of relevant he's also a, a personal friend of uh, Peter Joseph as well I, I mean that's uh yes yes uh, we, he is we have to is. throw it in there yeah. I mean no, but that's fine. I, I told you, be as brutal and be as honest as you want, because there's nothing to deny, and that's fine. Um, yes, that's that's true. Um, but there's also you, you can't blame Peter for uh, what he has done uh, in the end, uh, and this is his disposition. But we can have a discussion about it if you want to. Yeah. Well- I, I wanted to understand your dynamic with Peter Joseph be, because it, it, it like from from the RBOC perspective, and I, I know this is like you know the, we're just kind of rehashing really old shit, but um, the dynamic you had with Peter Joseph, the way that I've interpreted, it, and I think a few other people, I can't speak on behalf of everyone else, but was that Peter, and it makes sense to me. I'm not saying you're doing anything bad, but the interpretation of me was is that. Peter was making movies and, you know, being an artist and all this other stuff. And you were trying to lessen the work and problems that Peter would have to deal with if you didn't exist in your particular position. Is that, is that kind of like a correct assumption? Um, is that, is I mean, that not correct? I mean, I mean, uh, th- that is a description. Uh, I'm not saying it's inaccurate. I'm just saying... Okay. Maybe that's simplifying it a, a, a bit too much. Like, um, yeah, uh, Peter. Peter is Peter. Uh, he he does what he does best. Um, I did my best in a different way to uh, at least provide some sort of structure to to the movement, without saying that I'm qualified to do that. And I I do respect that people would ask my. Uh, myself uh are you qualified to do it i would say no i'm not i'm not i mean you know i'm just as much as a volunteer as everybody else but i did do it and and i will still continue to do it because i know that i can do it i don't feel powerless you know the one thing that makes me really mad is when people are here talking about how powerless they are to change things which is absolutely untrue they could if they only push forward and do it interesting could could you could we explore that more about people who feel power, powerless have you experienced that yeah okay yeah, i have um uh, what, I are they, actually, what do they uh, say oh go ahead go ahead i don't know <clears throat> uh, I, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Did, did you want to? Uh... Oh, I, I was just gonna say. Um, what what did they say when 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 you interpret something as as being powerless? What it, like like what did they say specifically? What are they powerless in? Well, well, I, yeah, we could just touch on a very common subject. Like, okay, well, the, the the global website doesn't function the way it should be. We should change this or that but uh yeah we can't do it because we don't have access and that's where the conversation ends without asking how can we get the access what would we need to do in order to change it and if we are serious about it shouldn't we just push forward with it and uh, i mean i think i think that the people here uh or in the movement that are left 